USB Wi-Fi adapters are commonly used. If you're not using Ethernet and don't have a built-in Wi-Fi card, chances are you will be using one. But how exactly do they work? We'll find this out and more in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from HomeNetworkGeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you find this video helpful, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's jump straight in and find out exactly how a USB Wi-Fi adapter even works. Despite their low profile size, even the smallest of adapters will contain an antenna. This is positioned within the casing and at the opposite end of the USB connector. The antenna allows data to be sent and received to nearby Wi-Fi networks in the form of radio waves. These radio waves must meet one of the 802.11 standards which have been set by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, who are more commonly referred to as the IEEE. -E. The standards have adapted and changed over the years, which has allowed for increased data transfer speeds. Regardless of the standard that the USB Wi-Fi adapter meets, they will all use the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. The adapter works as a messenger between your device and the Wi-Fi network, sending signals and instructions between the two. When both your device and the Wi-Fi network agree to a connection being established, your device should be able to access the internet. Using a USB Wi-Fi adapter really couldn't be made any easier. The majority of them, if not all of them, are actually plug and play devices. This means you just need to plug it into an available USB port on your device and you should find it starts working pretty much straight away. Long gone are the days where you've had to spend time installing the drivers from a CD. Your device will often install the drivers for you straight away, giving you near immediate access to the nearby Wi-Fi networks. You then just need to select the Wi-Fi network that you want to connect to and enter the password if there is one. Once the router or hotspot accepts your connection request, you should find you can get to the internet. Not all Wi-Fi adapters come in USB form, and sometimes you might find you actually never need one. Although they're not very common these days, some Wi-Fi adapters will come with a PCI connector instead of USB. These adapters need to be plugged into an available PCI slot on your computer to function. PCI adapters will often have an external antenna which actually ends up sticking out the back of your computer case. Whereas on others, the antenna is actually contained so it doesn't take any extra room at the back. If on the off chance you have a laptop that doesn't have a built-in wireless card, or maybe it's faulty. You can get Wi-Fi adapters that plug into the mini PCI slot, which is often found on the side of the laptop. Despite the various forms of Wi-Fi adapters available, the ones that use USB are by far the most commonly found. If having to rely on external adapters to connect to the internet really isn't your thing, you could always use wide ethernet instead. This involves running an ethernet cable from your router or your switch if you're using one, to the ethernet port on the back of your device. Network access over an ethernet connection is generally faster and more reliable than Wi-Fi. But many will prefer to use Wi-Fi just for the convenience, even if it means a slightly slower and less reliable connection. USB Wi-Fi adapters have become faster over time, with the more recent ones being able to achieve speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second. Now this is pretty fast, but only if you're actually able to achieve it. In reality, unfortunately, most of us will not be able to achieve these sorts of speeds and have to settle for a slightly slower connection. When it comes to looking at and comparing Wi-Fi adapters, the manufacturers will often quote the maximum speeds that you can achieve and not necessarily what is guaranteed. This is primarily down to the standard that the radio waves used by the adapter meet. The more recent standards provide higher maximum speeds. Here is a table comparing some of the different standards and the maximum speeds you can expect to achieve. A USB Wi-Fi adapter simply allows you to connect to a Wi-Fi network, so they're no more or less secure than a laptop with a built-in wireless card, as an example. The Wi-Fi adapter itself doesn't inherently present any security risks. The risk instead comes from the Wi-Fi network you're connecting to and any protection that you may or may not have on your device. The simple act of plugging a USB Wi-Fi adapter into your device isn't gonna affect your security. However, it's worth noting that you may well be at risk when connecting to a public Wi-Fi network, such as those that you'd find at a library or a coffee shop. Only when you're connected to this public Wi-Fi network is there a risk that other people that connect to the same network could access your device. As soon as you disconnect from the network, the risk is simply removed. In the case of using a USB Wi-Fi adapter to connect to your home router, only the other devices on your local area network would have visibility of your device. This is where you want to make sure your home network is kept secure by setting a strong and unique password and possibly even changing the SSID 
which is the name of the network that appears when you go searching for it. So to summarize, the security of your device has very little to do with the USB Wi-Fi adapter you're using, but much more to do with the Wi-Fi network you're connecting to, the encryption methods used, and whether there's a firewall in place. So to wrap up the video, USB Wi-Fi adapters work thanks to the tiny little antenna that's found within the casing of it. The antenna exchanges data in the form of radio waves with the nearby Wi-Fi networks. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like. If you have any questions on home networking, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help you out. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications to keep up with everything home networking. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.